Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa. Thanks for dropping by the Whimsy Stamps channel. Today I'm introducing the Whimsy Stamps Mini Slim Notched Hot Foil Plates. This is a brand new product to Whimsy and I can't wait to share it with you. We're going to go ahead and have a closer look at these hot foil plates. The set comes with six plates. The largest plate measures three and one eighth of an inch wide at the widest point by six and one eighth of an inch high. This set of plates was designed to coordinate with the new Mini Slim Notched and Mini Slim Notch Stitched die sets that just released today. Now, all of these products are sized for the very popular Mini Slim Line cards. However, you can use these products on all sizes of cards and other paper crafting projects. Here's a closer look at the foil design. You have a thin inner line with a thicker outer line. It has an Art Deco vibe about it to me. However, I've already created a few cards with floral designs. I even have used this with the new Hey Chickadee stamp and coordinating outline dies. And I do have some masculine card ideas that I want to share with you in the near future using the new Mini Slim notched hot foil plates. Now I use the Spellbinders hot foil system, but the plates can be used with other hot foiling systems like the Crafters Companion Gemini hot foil system and Couture Creations Go Press and Foil system. The first thing I want to do is turn my machine on. There's a switch located on the back side of the machine, so make sure the platform is securely in place. Flip that switch to turn this machine on and a solid red light will appear. That's letting me know the system is heating up. So while we wait for the system to heat up, let's talk about foils. With hot foil stamping, you need a heat activated foil like Glimmer Foil, Gemini Foil Press Foil, or Go Press and Foil Foil. Now, I know a lot of crafters are familiar with Deco Foil, but that is a reactive foil. In other words, it needs some type of adhesive to bind it to your cardstock so it won't work with our gorgeous mini slim notched plates. You will need a die cutting machine because once the hot foil system heats the plate and foil, we need pressure to adhere the foil to our surface. And in our case, it's going to be a paper surface. You can foil on leather, acetate, and other surfaces as as well. I do recommend you check out the owner's manual for your machine for all that information. Now, of course, I'm a Spellbinders girl, so I have my platinum machine over here to the right. So let's go ahead and get started. I've rolled some foil out onto my small craft mat. Now, I use this craft mat anytime I want to cut foil or paper, and I'm going to be using a craft knife. Now you can cut the foil with scissors. I just find it easier to use this old Martha Stewart craft knife and my little craft mat. So tip number one, if you take the time to cut your piece of foil down so that it's a tad bit larger than the hot foil, hot foil plate, excuse me, you'll find it helps with over foiling. I've laid the hot foil plate down on my paper design side facing down. I'm using a low tack tape to create a hinge that will allow me to flip that plate back. I'm going to lay the foil down, flip the plate back down over the foil and cardstock. Now you want to make sure the foil is pretty side up. We're going to secure the other end down with a piece of that same low tack tape. Flip this upside down so that the hot foil plate is laying on the hot foil platform. We're going to push the timer button and wait for that light to turn a solid green. Now, once that light is solid green, we're going to lay the shim and glimmer plate on top. We'll remove the platform along with the plates from the hot foil system. And we're going to run this through our die cutting machine. That brings me to my second tip. When the hot foil plate is temporarily secured with low tag tape, it won't shift when it's moved from one machine to the other or while it's running through your die cutting machine. So let's take a closer look at this once I carefully remove it from the platform. You want to be careful the plate does get hot. And here's a closer look at that foiled cardstock layer. And that's going to lead me into my next tip. When it comes to cardstock quality, you want to choose a 130 or 120 pound cover stock for the best results. And then right into my next tip, 
invest in a Tombow Mono Sand Eraser or Couture Creations Creative Detailer tool that will help get rid of any overfoiling you may have when you're doing hot foil stamping. Now there are a few other techniques you can do with hot foil plates. I won't go into great detail since I plan on making a detailed video about those soon. In order to create a letterpress look, which is one of the techniques, we're going to use the plates without the hot foil system. So two pieces of cardstock I have here to create a shim. You can use a metal shim if you have one. We're going to use an embossing mat and of course, we're going to go ahead and lay down our cardstock panel that I'm using. Now, I'm going to ink the plate, the hot foil plate, lightly with an ink pad. I recommend an ink pad that has a firm pad since this technique requires a very light pressure. So I like using dye inks. Uh, you're going to make sure the design side is facing up and then lightly tap the ink pad across the plate. Place the inked plate on the paper. Cover it with a die cutting plate and run it through your machine. Now, before you do that, I do recommend spritzing the paper with alcohol or water. I prefer alcohol because it dries faster. That's going to soften the fibers of your paper so it does not crack or crease. Now, this is the letterpress look that we get. You can skip the ink and just do a deboss look, or if you flip this over, you're going to see we have a beautiful embossed look. So the last thing I want to share with you is stamping over the foil. So I have a piece of foiled cardstock in my Misty and I'm stamping it with a forever green ink and the Whimsy Stamps Fern background stamp. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous stamp. I love that Whimsy has done two die sets that go with these hot foil plates. It makes creating layers very simple. You can layer, layer, layer till your heart is content with these three sets. I love it. So let's go ahead and die cut this out and you're going to see the three layers I created throughout the video with you. The bottom layer is the embossed look and then we have that green card stock that I foiled and then of course the piece that we foiled and stamped. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that you can continue to layer this up if you want. I'm gonna stop here with it. I don't wanna cover up that gorgeous fern design uh, too much, but I did decide that it would be fun to come in with Whimsy's Flower Wishes stamp set and do one of the jars of flowers. I stamped it out, colored it with my Copic markers real quick, and popped it up off the front of this to create a mini slimline shaped card. Please let me know what you think of hot foiling in the comments below. And if you found the video valuable, please hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. YouTube seems to really like those things. I do want to remind you that you can find more inspiration on my YouTube channel, Confetti and Cards with Lisa Mincing. You can find more information on the products shown in this video by visiting the links directly below in the description box. Take care, and until next time, please know how much I appreciate you and the time you spend with me.